So what we're going to try to do today is give you a framework of two simple acronyms to try to remember um, how to do critical appraisal and fast critical appraisal, particularly of randomized control trials. And I think during the small group exercises, you all looked at exercise one of, of your abstracts, had to deal, that dealt with this particular clinical question, which is, in people uh, who take long-haul flights, does wearing graduated compression stockings prevent DVT? So the first question I want to ask is, um, how many of you have had a long-haul flight in the last couple of years? <laughs> Just now. Uh, how many of you uh, wore stockings, compression stockings? Okay. Um, and those of you that didn't, um, let's see how many of you would those of you that didn't, how many of you would think about wearing compression stockings? Okay. Let's see if we can change that towards the end of the session, or maybe not. Um, so for those of you who don't know what compression stockings are, I have an example of them. So these are the typical compression stockings worn by one of the tutors uh, in this um, week's course. And I need um, a volunteer to wear these stockings. <laughs> They've been very, uh, they've been washed. They're clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it yourself. Can do it and and give the talk at the same time. Someone will do it. And actually, you're in perfect position because it's very similar to what type of seats you will get in an airplane as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Could you put both of them? Thanks, John. <laughs> okay. Now. In your workbooks, you can find in page well, 73 of your workbooks. What search was done to try to answer this particular question? Okay? And they came up, well, we came up with a particular study by Sco um, Skur in 2001. And the full study, the full paper, can be found on page 95. So if you go to page 95 of your workbooks. Okay. You'll be able to see the full study as reported uh, in The Lancet in 2001. For the rest of the presentation, I'll be asking you to come up with the answers. Okay for the different parts of the quest of, of the critical appraisal that should be able to you should be able to find in the paper right there. Okay? So the first thing to do is to think about whether this particular study that we found is relevant and can answer the question that we have. And for that we've already generated a structure question using a PICO from a clinical um, setting. And what we want to do is do exactly the same to generate the PICO or the question that was trying to answer whoever wrote this particular paper. So we're going to set up to find the PICO for this particular trial. So I want you to have a look. I'll give you, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. Search around in the, uh, in the article to identify the participants, the intervention group, comparison group, <coughs> and the outcome that they were interested in. It's not a solo exercise, you obviously can confer with your um, neighbours. You're happy to talk. Uh, but it is a fast critical appraisal exercise, so let's, let's crack on. Um, the other thing I want you to notice here, I've, I've set up the pie connects to um, a series of geometrical shapes, and this is what is called the um, um, <coughs> gate framework developed by Rod Jackson. And the, the way he came up with this um, series of figures 
This he was um, looking at, um, well, we are the Xbox generation, and this pretty much, or, or his, um, there's a lot of people that, that, that use, um, play with Xbox, and these are actually the figures that come in the Xbox, a triangle, a circle, a square, and then the X later on. <coughs> uh, the triangle will represent precisely the population with uh, an identified target that you want to, to look at, and then how it narrows down to who you actually included in your trial. Then you have a circle which sort of breaks in the, the population that you um, encounter into, sorry, put into the trial into the two groups, the intervention group, whoever you want to, um, to apply whatever therapy it is that you want to apply, and then a control group or comparator group. And the circle with a divided in the middle sort of highlights the fact that they're actually looking at pretty much the same individuals or the same type of comparable groups with the only difference that these two groups have being the intervention as such. So anything that we find different between these two groups should be down to the intervention. And finally, an outcome, which is the square, which is typical, a two-by-two two table, with, uh, where we have whether they have um, the intervention or, or whether they were in intervention or the control group, and whether they had the outcome or they didn't have the outcome. So that's the, the gate framework. And it's very useful because as you go around, for example, through a paper, and you find things about the population, you can just put a little triangle next to the, uh, to the paper and say, okay, this is something about the population, something about the population. You find something about the intervention as such described there, you can just put a little, a little circle and identify the, um, the um, intervention of the control groups that way, or descriptions of the intervention, and the same thing with the outcome.